Presenting American Western and Landscape Artist, Suzanne Baker. Suzanne Baker has graced this earth with her energy and creative talents for over 80 years. And as this dedication is being read, images of some of Suzanne's childhood memories, photographs, and paintings will be shown. Suzanne never liked being called Sue or Susie, so we will honor her wishes here and use her formal name. Suzanne was born in Manhattan Beach, California in 1939. Euclid Martin was her father, and he was a Yale liberal arts graduate while his mother Josephine, called Joe Sprague, attended USC studying drama and art. With such parents, Suzanne Martin was destined to be artistic. Her mother, Jo, was a wonderful artist who entertained other artists and helped shape Suzanne's French impressionistic style of acrylic painting. Suzanne was proud to know that her family roots went back to the early 1600s when ancestor William Brett arrived in America on the Mayflower. She was also proud that her religious following in Christian science was ingrained in the original practices of Mary Baker Eddy, who was a distant relative of both she and her husband, Gordon. When Suzanne was five years old, her father purchased a 100-acre ranch in Three Rivers, California, where she lived throughout her formative years. Her father worked around the area as an irrigation engineer, installing and doing irrigation repairs for farmers in the San Joaquin Valley. Her mother was a stay-at-home mom, and since Euclid was away for days at a time, Joe was left to raise Suzanne and her three siblings. Drawing and painting at the kitchen table was a major social activity for Suzanne and her sisters. Joe worked hard at keeping her children entertained and fed while educating them the very best that she could. At a young age, Suzanne learned a good work ethic as she had to milk the family cow, gather wood, and tend to many other chores around the ranch. In grade school, Suzanne was terribly shy. She used to hide in the citrus grove next to Lemon Cove Elementary to avoid going to class with the other children. Part of Suzanne's timid nature was the fact that she had poor eyesight and dyslexia. She did not learn to read until she had a wonderful fourth grade teacher at Three Rivers Elementary named Eleanor Marshall. Miss Marshall took her under her wing and taught her to read. Miss Marshall and her husband Albert became surrogate parents of a sort. Their daughter Jean was in class with Suzanne and they became best friends. Mr. Marshall was an established landscape artist in watercolor and an avid High Sierra mountain hiker. Suzanne was first invited to hike along with the Marshall family when she was in the fourth grade. She recalls that she complained that her feet hurt and asked how much further many times along the trail. Mr. Marshall spent hours helping Suzanne to improve upon her landscape art using watercolors. Daughter Jean Marshall has remained one of Suzanne's best friends, and the two reunited a few years ago to revisit some of their old hiking trails and childhood haunts. Suzanne's photography and artwork was also influenced by her school bus driver, Bill Jones, who was also a summer High Sierra Ranger and a freelance photographer for National Geographic during the 40s and 50s. A fine artist in his own right, Bill Jones helped her gain perspective and taught her about the importance of light. Suzanne was proud to live on part of the old original Tharp Ranch, where Hale Dixon Tharp was believed to be the first white man to live in giant forest and homestead the area. She was happy to be neighbors with Mr. Tharp's grandson, Dave Mahern, who allowed her to ride horses on their property that stretched up into the mountains. Local cattlemen and horsemen, Dow Whitney helped Suzanne and her siblings learn how to ride, train horses, and work cattle. Dow shared his Western Horseman and Quarter Horse Journal magazines with the girls, which helped them further their equestrian training and horsemanship skills. At the age of 10, 
Suzanne bought her first horse with money she earned from digging up worms and selling them in tin cans to fishermen at the Cobble Lodge Resort, which was a couple of miles from their home. And she sold the worms for another three years and bought her first saddle at the age of 13. As a teen, Suzanne worked as a horse packer at the Giant Forest Pack Station and for the Mineral King Pack Station. Riding horses in the Sierras was her love. Through her paintings, you can see and feel her love as images of horse and rider are in the forefront of the wild mountain ranges she traversed. Suzanne's love of horses is what encouraged her to attend Cal Poly San Luis Obispo College as an animal husbandry major. She was in the second class of girls allowed to study at Cal Poly. In those days, many of the teachers weren't too happy to have girls on campus, and they were downright mean to them at times. Suzanne once had a math problem that she couldn't understand in algebra, so after class she went to talk to the instructor, who then proceeded to tell her she just didn't understand the problem. She had no business being in college. That shook her up a bit, but she continued in class and passed. It's at Cal Poly where she met her husband, Gordon Baker. She can't recall for sure if they met at church or a rodeo club dance. In college, she and Gordon tore up the dance floor, doing a fast country swing, oaky stomp, or the jitterbug, which was Gordon's favorite dance. Suzanne and Gordon hit it off, both as avid horsemen and as spiritual Christian science scholars. After a year of dating, Suzanne and Gordon married on June 28, 1960. They had two sons while attending Cal Poly, Brett and Haas. Suzanne had to drop out of school to raise the boys and feed all the cowboy students that lived in their little rental house on Sewer Creek Ranch, not far from the college. She also raised and trained colts that were sold to local cowboys. Legendary horseman Ray Hunt was the horse department head who purchased Suzanne's mare, Miss Kawea, Kitty for short. He used her as a brood mare for the Cal Poly Equestrian Program. Gordon continued in school as Suzanne made money to pay his tuition by feeding and renting a couple of rooms to fellow cowboy classmates and training horses. When Gordon finished his B.S. in animal husbandry, they moved to Lovelock, Nevada, where he got a job as a cowboy and then as a high school ag teacher. Suzanne says those were hard, lean years as she once again had to feed cowboys and raise their now three children with the addition of daughter Jenny. The cold weather in Lovelock could be challenging, and the desire for a home of their own and a place to raise their children had them looking back to California for work. Gordon found a cowboy job in Chowchella and then a school teaching job in Lee Grand, where they planted roots by buying a piece of property with a building on it that Suzanne turned into a charming home, almost entirely on her own while Gordon and the children were at school. She loved their hobby ranch where she could grow fruit trees and have a seasonal garden, but she had a dream to one day own a ranch that had a view of her beloved Sierra Nevada mountains. Teachers didn't make that much money, so she knew if she wanted her dreams to come true, she would have to take control of her own destiny. Raising three children and a husband who liked horses and rodeos was hard to afford at times. Through her hard work, she managed to keep her family fed while rebuilding their home and barn. While the children were at school, she attended a few art and photography classes at Merced College. When the kids got into high school, Suzanne finally had some time to work on her own career as an artist. She loved landscape painting, but realized there was just no money to be made in that area. So she focused on Western art with horse and riders. She loved painting, and the horse and rider were her favorite images since childhood. At the age of three, she drew her first horse and rider on the back of her favorite book, The Peddler's Clock. Suzanne still has that book and the artwork. 
After three long years of reading dozens of art books, attending classes, workshops, and by independently studying the Great Artist Series through master art courses, Suzanne felt secure enough to start entering her artwork into juried contests. In 1987, Suzanne entered her first painting in the Arts in the Parks competition, placing in the top 100. That contest got her foot in the door to becoming the artist in resident in Yosemite National Park in 1988. In 1988, she was also featured as an up-and-coming artist in the Southwest Art Magazine. It took her 48 years of hard work, but she'd finally made it as a professional artist. In 1989, President George Bush Sr. sent Air Force One to the El Prado Gallery in Sedona, Arizona to pick up three of her paintings to use in China for an American West-themed delegation party. On a side note, President Bush did not purchase the works of art, rather he borrowed them. He sent Susanna a thank you and an apology note for keeping her paintings for almost a year. With the kids out of the house and off to college, Suzanne painted diligently, creating three to seven works of art to sell each month. She had a goal in mind to buy herself a ranch with a view, and nothing would stop her. In 1990, Suzanne had earned enough money to buy her first 40 acres, and she and Gordon began to build their first new home in Raymond, California. By the end of 1995, she purchased two more parcels and paid off the land and their home. They were debt-free. She notes that one of her proudest moments was knowing that she had built her dream home and paid for her ranch through her hard work as an artist. She now owned a ranch that no one could take away from her. It should be noted that not long after Suzanne went off to college at Cal Poly, her family ranch in Three Rivers was bought by the government and the Terminus Dam was built, which flooded their property. Her favorite riding and hiking trails along the Cahuilla River and Horse Creek were no more. Her childhood memories were washed away. She did not want to feel such a loss again, so property ownership and leaving a place for her children and grandchildren to enjoy was her priority. As fate would have it, The current California drought has receded the water in the Cahuilla Lake, so she was able to visit her childhood home site and walk some of the trails where she once rode her horses. The stroll down memory lane was even more exciting because she got to meet Dow Whitney's grandsons and was able to tell them about their grandfather and show them where the old homestead used to be. Suzanne believes that women artists in the western horse and rider medium often have their artwork selling for far less money than artwork created by men. She realized this early on, so she signs her name S. Baker to downplay that she's a woman. Though her artwork equals or exceeds many of her contemporaries, her paintings are still not priced as high as male artists. Suzanne has been a smart businesswoman and has evolved as an artist, taking on more of an impressionistic flair. She uses hues of yellow and crimson to make her paintings come to life. She's often noted that if you squint your eyes, you will realize how much yellow light radiates through. The play of light is what makes the paintings come to life. Many of her cooler paintings are caught with a backdrop taking place in the Minarets mountain range with majestic Mount Ritter or Banner towering in the distance. Zan's paintings come from using her own photos that she puts in a collage to form the perfect scene. Her favorite hikes traverse beneath the Ritter Range in the Sierra Nevada Mountains, where the mountains capture frequent storms and cool conditions with dominant blue and purple light. On the eastern side of the Sierras, her artwork captures the warmer golden sagebrush and hues in the buckwheat, with magic sherbet and pink skies at dusk and brilliant oranges during the sunrise. For the most part, Suzanne is painted sitting or standing at her desk and is only painted in a freestanding easel when she's worked with an artist in residence in one of our national parks. Several of Suzanne's paintings hang in galleries around the United States and abroad. She has been honored and recognized by the National Museum of Art. 
Many of her paintings have been shown and have won awards in the American Women Artists of the West show in Tucson, Arizona, the Western Rendezvous Art Show in Helena, Montana, in the Cowgirl Hall of Fame in Fort Worth, Texas, and the Desert Caballeros Western Museum in Wickenburg, Arizona, at the Gettysburg Museum in Los Angeles, California, and in the Booth Museum in Cartersville, Georgia, where she was honored to sit on a panel of distinguished artists who spoke about the importance of horse and rider artwork throughout history. Many of you may have seen her featured in the Western Horseman, Western Beef Producer, Cowboys and Indians Art of the West, or Southwest Art Magazines. She's had over a dozen of her paintings used as covers on the Rocky Mountain Writers Magazine, and she was featured in two books, Western Traditions and Art of the American West, and was featured in the Encyclopedia of Women Artists of the American West. As an artist, collecting new subject matter is key to creating a variety of artwork. Suzanne began photographing horses and riders while working as a packer during her teen years, and then by watching husband Gordon cowboying in the 60s and 70s. Throughout the 80s and 90s, she began actively hiking hundreds of miles of trails in the high Sierra Nevada mountains, where she collected images of craggly foxtail pines and majestic windswept high Sierra junipers that only grow above 8,000 feet. Many of her paintings will feature such trees and windswept landscapes, which lend great depth to the richness of her artwork. Suzanne prides herself as a bush engineer and as a Rube Goldberg artist. She fashioned and hiked with a home-sewn lightweight bivy sack to cover her sleeping bag, while most people camped with heavy tents. She transformed used ivory liquid bottles into drinking bottles before plastic was the norm. She said the key to her being able to hike at such high elevations for weeks at a time was because her supplies were lightweight. In the early years, she slept with her camera and film to keep them warm, and she tied her food up in a tree to keep the bears and critters out of it. One night, she must not have washed her tin cup well enough because a bear took a bite out of it when it was tied to her pack, just inches from her face. She gave out a fearful war hoot scream after seeing the bear's enormous face backlit by the moon. She says that that was the most scared she's ever been in her 70 years of hiking in the Sierras. Suzanne's artwork can be purchased from several well-known galleries, and if you look online, a private collector may be selling an original. Buyer beware, you may find many products with her artwork that have been pirated by seedy people on several internet sites. As of 2023, Suzanne says that she's painted at least a thousand originals, and if a piece of her art doesn't sell within a couple of months, she usually has the gallery return it, and she will paint over it. Finding frames to fit her art was challenging, so she started to make her own gold foil frames and matting. Suzanne is very proud of her accomplishments and her children and her grandchildren. Happily, two of her children have built homes on the ranch, helping to fulfill her dream of family members being nearby to share in her joy. From her living room, she can see cattle and horses in the pasture and her beloved Sierra Nevada mountains, just as she had imagined.